You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Housing inventory levels continue to drop. In fact, in February, they were back down to 970,000 units. That's not a lot of housing for a country with over 330 million people. I'm Kathy Fetke, and welcome to The Real Well Show. As interest rates drop, more and more people can afford to buy a house again. And when I say more and more people, it's in the millions. With only 970,000 units available, what does that mean for the housing market? It could mean that we're in for another bull run. That's why right now we're really in a sweet spot where investors don't have to compete with everybody else, and including retail buyers, to find inventory. But it may not last long. Our guest today is a mortgage lender and real estate investor based out of Southern California at GuaranteedRate.com. Richard Advani has been in the mortgage industry for over 16 years and specializes in working with real estate investors and is very popular among our Real Wealth members. He's here today to share what he's seeing investors doing and what he believes will happen this year in 2023. So Richard, welcome to The Real Wealth Show. Thank you. It's good to be back here. Well, your industry's been in the news a lot, mortgages, and apparently things are getting better. So what's going out there in mortgage land? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, good news for all of us investors. Rates have really come off the highs that we experienced towards the end of last year. Uh, Overall, I'd say interest rates are down about one to one and a quarter percent um, across the board. Which you know, on on average, for most of us, you know, buying homes out there, you know, uh, one and a quarter percent on on a two or three hundred thousand dollar house purchase adds up to a decent amount of money. I mean, it's one hundred forty to one hundred sixty, one hundred seventy dollars a month, which, as we're all aware, you know, is 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 a good amount in terms of percentage ROI. Absolutely. So, what can an average investor get now on an investor loan? Absolutely. That's a great question. So on average, with 25% down, people can get back into the high fives. Um, on average, you know, we're seeing rates at around 5.875 to six and a quarter with a modest amount of points. Um, as, as most of us are aware, you know, towards the third quarter of last year, it got, it got pretty ridiculous. Uh, you know, investor, uh, mortgage interest rates were, were in the high sevens uh, a lot of times with, two and a half to three and a half points. Um, and it made it very difficult to, um, you know, have a lot of deals pencil out. So, you know, the, the reduction now to be able to get into the high fives and low sixes with, you know, one and a quarter to two points is, is, is refreshing, I would say. And we're, we're seeing a lot of, a, a lot of investors who were, you know, kind of sitting on the fence, um, getting off the fence now, you know, that paired with all of the creative builder incentives out there right now. Well, that's the thing is a lot of the builders will they'll pay the points for you. So you're getting that low interest rate and you're getting, in some cases, a lower cost to the house or even just being able to get the property. You know, what we saw a year ago and for the last few years is that certain markets that we really like were just, we just, they had nothing to offer. <laughs> there was, our teams couldn't get their hands on any property, let alone get anything to our investors. So now at least our investors can get something they could they can now negotiate yeah and i you know if you recall i've got you know almost two dozen uh, rental properties myself as well and and to your point what we've seen is you know we, we've gone from eight months to a year ago where if you wanted to buy a, a a property whether new construction or a turnkey property a lot of times you had to wait up to two years, two and a half years, um, you know, at best case, six to eight months, if you were lucky um, to buy these properties. So, of course, we've seen now that we can there's actually available inventory for us to purchase in 30, 60 or 90 days, which which, you know, is huge because it kind of makes it hard to plan when you're buying uh, an asset. And it's you're not actually going to be able to to make that investment for, you know, eight months or a year or or two years. Uh, Another thing we've seen across the board, you know, and definitely in your markets, especially is there's access to inventory now that wouldn't have been 
accessible to an investor. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of these neighborhoods were only owner occupied, the builders, developers, uh, they would not sell to investors. And, you know, now they're open to it, which is, you know, cool, because there's a unique opportunity for us as investors to come in and buy in areas and in projects that we normally might not have been able to, you know, so it's kind of twofold. Exactly. And that could change soon with um, as inflation starts to come down, interest rates will probably also continue to come down, at least mortgage rates. I think the Fed has made it clear they're going to keep raising rates for a bit more, um, maybe smaller raises, but still they I, they are on a mission to get inflation down to 2%. And so far, uh, it's it's starting to happen. We're starting to see inflation numbers decline, which mortgage rates tend to follow. So if we do see rates continue to decline, uh, there really isn't that much inventory out there. Uh, there's a bit more than there was, but if I believe if you if you look at the available inventory, they're also counting pending sales. So those aren't really available properties. They're they're tied up. It's somewhere around 650,000 uh, properties, homes available in, in such a huge nation with, you know, uh, you know, over I think the statistic is what we need three and a half to 5 million homes. I think that we're short. So the, yeah, yeah. not a lot. So inventory is still so low. And as rates continue to decline, we're going to see that frenzy again. And it could be as soon as this summer. So this really is a oh, just such a great opportunity. I know I say it in every podcast, but I can't emphasize it enough. This is the time to jump in. Yeah, actually, um, I, I did a, a webinar with Aristotle the other day. And that morning, so it was last week, I read an article that came out in Forbes. And they were talking about the, the same thing, how everyone's kind of, everyone who has been sitting back and waiting for this magical dip that's going to happen, um, there's, there's no inventory for that. And, and, you know, all everyone, most people who have a, you know, two and a half or three and a half percent, 30 year fix on the home, they're, they're not moving right now. Right. So that inventory isn't coming up for sale that, you know, n normally and organically would come up for sale. Um, you know, so it, they, it, they kind of alluded to the same thing in, in the article, which is, you know, going into the summer, things are going to be heating up again. And, you know, builders are building a little less for fear of, you know, what happened last time, even though, you know, we're obviously in a, uh, we've learned our lessons overall, I think, in the real estate and the mortgage and every industry, but, you know, they're building even less. There's people not selling, you know, so this housing problem that we're having nationally, which it, at, it, if everything was going perfectly, I think the recession would take a decade to solve. You know, we're getting nowhere near getting it solved. You know, so I'm I'm still long real estate as an investor, definitely. Yeah, all this happening, this sh shortage of inventory when we have <laughs> so many household formations with with the millennials and then the the Gen Zers right behind them, uh, and then of course we've got baby boomers retiring and also buying the second homes and so forth because they're at that stage in life. Uh, so what are you seeing people, investors getting? Are they are they getting the five, seven, 10 year arms or are you seeing people jumping back into the 30 year fixed? That's a great question. And I get asked that quite often. Um, all, although we have arms available and there are arms available in the market, in general, what you'll see is they're not quite as competitive as what they used to be. Um, the the delta between the 30 year fixed and say a seven and a 10 year arm in most cases is quarter to three eighths, maybe half a percent better. And, you know, for most of us, especially when you're looking at a quarter percent delta, yes, I expect to refinance in the next year and a half or two uh, when rates move back down or, you know, hopefully sooner, whenever that is. Um, but I do plan to refinance. But also, is it worth taking on the additional risk? to go to an arm for just a quarter percent, you know, to each his own. And everyone's going to look at that a little differently. I know for myself, I, I leaned towards, uh, you know, still going with the, the fixed rate. Um, but it's available out there. You know, it just depends on what in everyone's individual uh, investment objectives are. But for 99% of the investors that I've gone over that option with, we all kind of lean towards, you know, still moving forward with the fixed rate. Well, especially if rates are back down in the fives, you know, the the expectation isn't that it will go much below that, I would think. What are your thoughts on on how low rates will go? 
Yeah, so I don't think we're ever going to get, well, who knows if ever, but I, I, I don't think we're going to get <laughs> in the short term back to where we were, right? We were getting primary homes in the mid to high twos, rentals in the high threes. You know, we don't realize when, when we're in the midst of it how crazy it was. And now in hindsight, you know, when we're talking about high fives and low sixes being a good rate, I mean, we were at the high threes is nuts. But um, I don't know if we're going to get there in the short term, but I'm hoping that you know, primary homes in the low fours and investment properties in the high fours to low fives, so maybe a drop of a percent from now is something we can all look forward to, uh, as you stated, as inflation eases and, you know, as as the Treasury bond kind of reacts to that. Um, as you're aware, and most listeners at this point, because I know most of us mortgage people kind of beat that point in, but, um, you know, mortgage rates are more tied to the 10-year Treasury bond than the actual Fed rate. So, Oftentimes, what we'll see is even as the Feds raise the rates, the Treasury market may react the opposite way. Um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. But um, another interesting uh, thing that I've really seen, Kathy, is, you know, as last year, as a lot of what I call traditional cash flow investors have kind of, um, you know, took a little bit of a backseat. Um, don't get me wrong. There were a ton, of, myself included, a lot of people still buying and getting crazy deals. But you know, a good portion of people decided that they were going to take a seat. What What is interesting is, and I know you guys experienced this as well, is I, I saw like an influx of the couple notch higher in terms of affluent people coming in that all of a sudden now we're looking to real estate, right? Because they, they had made a lot of money in stocks and other avenues and they wanted to diversify. And when, you know, a lot of the mass populace of us investors were kind of you know, retreating for a moment to take a breather, this whole new class who have, you know, way greater wealth, you know, the wealth that all of us are trying to achieve, we're coming in and, and scooping up properties left, right, and center, but putting 50, 60% down, right? And, you know, a lot of them are, were just looking for a safe place to put their money long term, right? They had other investments that were making um, them money. And, you know, it was interesting that they were looking at real estate as as the bank, as the traditionally how we looked at a bank 30 years ago, right? A safe place to put your money. Um, and they weren't as concerned with the actual ROI. And, you know, it was, it was kind of profound because it was, you know, you see a whole group of people kind of like, oh, no, we're going to wait. And then, you know, people with more means and potentially more knowledge than all of us looking at what we were retreating from as actually the safe haven, you know? So it's, it's cool. It's, it's been interesting seeing that. And now, of course, as you're aware, all the people that were on the fence are wising up to the rates are down, the incentives are out, you know, and there, this may be a unique opportunity. And in my mind, I think it is. I think we've got, uh, you know, two to four, six, seven months of this real sweet spot before builders are like, hey, you know what? Actually, things are being bought and, you know, we're going to slash those incentives. So, Mm -hmm. You know, probably better than me, though, but that's my take. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, where are you invested? Uh, all over the place. So Florida, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Ohio, upstate New York, Missouri, um, you know, kind of all over the country. I have uh, two short term rentals here in California. Um, but, you know, as, as, as I've been working with you guys for, you know, 12 or 13 years and working with investors for 15 years of my career, you know, over the course, when you have all that data in front of you, it makes it easy, um, obviously, to, to pick the good market and being able to, to work and learn from organizations like yours, you know, for the last 10, 12 years is, is definitely helpful. Yeah. I, and you, you have that insight. You know, I was a mortgage broker for a while too, and I got to learn a lot from my clients because you get to generally see their entire portfolio and what they're invested in, what's performing and what's not. Um, what are you seeing your clients doing and where are they buying? You know, that's, that's an interesting question. I think that really depends on what the client's individual objective is, right? If we're talking about, you know, dealing with clients that are in their mid fifties and they're actually looking to replace income, their strategy, of course, is going to be a little different than, you know, someone in their forties who's looking to, you know, looking for a safe place for money. And, you know, ROI is important, right? It's important to all of us. However, I think most people don't look at ROI the right way. You know, I look at ROI as, as a measuring tool of one property to the next, but also I realize inherently that, you know, even if we could in this market make a six or seven or eight percent, you know, people chase these returns that where they get these numbers from, who knows? But, you know, what does that mean for you? You know, an eight percent return is 
$150, $170 a month on a lot of these real estate investments. And it, it's a great percentage return. It's a solid investment. But how is that going to change your life, right? It's it's not most of the time, right? Is it a dinner for you? Um, and, you know, coming to the realization that, especially with new investors, that, you know, you, you're investing – not for the short term, you're investing for the long term, because that's where obviously the wealth building gets compounded, the principal pay down, the hedge against inflation, rent increases, and, and all of that. And, you know, I, I, while it, once again, it's important to look at an ROI to determine an investment, um, you know, but to take a little step back from that as well and look long term. You know, what is the long term projection for us? What are you looking for out of it? And is that investment going to, you know, suit your long term goal? You know, and, and, um, so yeah, it, it, I think most people though are leaning kind of to the new construction or, you know, the, the turnkey markets. It's very difficult to find for, for people outside of, of real wealth network to, to find a reputable team, right? Um, mm -hmm. for the average person that you and I encounter in the street that says, oh yeah, you know, I'd love to buy a, an investment property. I don't even know where to start. Or, you know, that's why I've never done it. Or the person who's like, yeah, I'm on Zillow and I'm calling all day long. You know what I call a retail investor. You know, it's it's hard being a retail investor without having, you know, and even when you do find the deals, can you trust that person across from you? You know, so I think, you know, having Real Wealth Network, especially to, you know, you have the trusted vetted market, you have the trusted vetted lenders, and and also you have inventory that's not available to the retail investor, you know, so it's to me, it's VIP buying experience, right? You know what's available. You can, you know, contract that. You're not making tons of phone calls and, you know, trying to uh, standing in line with, you know, 50 people in front of a house trying to make offers. So um, I see people buying all over the place. And I mean, I don't even know what, how many markets do you guys service now? Officially 14, 16, 18? About 15, yeah. So the, you have product for every investor, you know, whether mm -hmm. you're retired and you need to replace income, whether you're young and you want to, you know, grow wealth long term, um, you know, so we see people like all over the place. And we started the uh, single family rental fund in, in Texas for people who don't want to do anything. <laughs> they don't want to get their own loans. They don't want to pick out the property or manage the property managers. We just do it all for them and they invest. So that's been t fun too. That's at growdevelopments.com. Now we have a live event coming up. It's virtual, really cool virtual live event where we've got the Zoom private rooms and we're excited about it coming up for February 11th. I know you'll be there. We'll be showcasing the 15 different teams. Actually, it'll be just 10 on this one uh, from around the country. And it's so valuable to hear from each of them to see how their markets are doing and what the property managers are saying. Is there uh, any change in the rental demand or in the rental rates? Are, are any of the property managers seeing rents go down? Or are they going up? I mean, uh, during COVID, it was the property managers who really kept us on top of what was happening. And it was completely different than what the headlines were seeing and, and articles were saying about the, the market. They were predicting a complete housing crash. And our property managers were, say, were saying, no, you know, we're seeing people waiting out the door trying to get a rental and rents are going up. Uh, so we have that chance again on uh, February 11th. It's an all day event. You can sign up for free at realwealth.com and you'll be there. Uh, what do you, will you be speaking or just kind of giving us kind of an update on the rates at that time? Um, I think that's to be determined. I know I'm definitely going to share an update on rates and as well as what's happening in the mortgage market broad level for people that couldn't have made, you know, didn't make it to this, for example. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be informative. And, you know, it's, it's funny, we, you know, through COVID, if you remember, everyone thought real estate was going to crash. Investors are going to get crushed. You know, people aren't going to make their rents. And, and it's, you know, what happened over a year and a half property values nationally went up 30, 40% in some markets, you know, rents went up dramatically as well. And, you know, the, I guess the age old adage, you know, when, when everyone's fearful, um, you know, be greedy, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of stayed true then, right. Whoever still bought, and and got away from the mass hysteria and the articles, you know, fared very well. And, you know, obviously invest wisely and invest cautiously, but look, read between the lines. And, you know, I, I even being in the industry, I look at headlines and it's like home sales drop again. And, and you know, and, and it's a huge thing in bold. 
And the sad thing is these days, most people just run with that. They don't read the article, but I actually read the article because I'm like, okay, what, what are they talking about? And half the time you will see, like it even says, oh, well, values are still up over last year, but you know, the percentage of sales that they expected is lower than expected, right? So it's like, how does this tie to this fear mongering headline that you have there? You know, it's so deceptive. And, you know, so I urge people when you see articles like that, read the whole article. Don't just go with that line because they want to grab your attention, but it also jades people, you know, and, mm-hmm. and I have friends and family um, that aren't investors. They're like, how's it going for you? You know, we heard things are so bad and, you know, being an investor. And I'm like, I, I don't experience any of that, you know? Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. That's why, I mean, during COVID, it was really hard to know what was happening. Everybody was a bit frozen and it was unprecedented. And it was, what, when have you ever seen the world just come to a stop, right? Nobody knew what was going to happen, but that's why having contact with the property managers, the boots on the street real time is so helpful. So again, you can sign up for the event February 11th um, and just go to realwealth.com to sign up. Well, Richard, it's always a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you for helping so many of our members at Real Wealth get the financing they need to build their portfolios. And I do want to mention, I haven't said this for a while, uh, investors can get lots of loans. You know, you could get at least 10 conventional loans. Has anything changed on that front or our um any changes to an investor being able to get 10 conventional investor loans? Uh, no, there hasn't been any changes to that. Investors can still get 10 loans. You can still put 20% down. Um, and as you're aware, you know, the ability to go beyond 10 is easier than it's ever been. You know, in fact, these non-traditional loans are, are, you know, based on the property itself. So a lot of times they don't even require income documentation. So, you know, uh, to your point, though, you know, the Fannie Mae 10 is the target um, and those have the best overall interest rates. But, you know, even through all this craziness, alleged craziness that we've gone through the last three or four years, you know, Fannie Mae hasn't dropped the loan limit. Right. They've kept it at the 10. And, you know, if everyone remembers pr- after 08, they did drop that for a while. You know, to me, mm-hmm. that shows that at least Fannie Mae's economist thinks think that things overall are still you know pretty robust as it relates to real estate. That's great. All right. Well, thanks again for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show and best of luck in your new sport, racing cars. (laughs) Thank you so much. Yeah. Stay safe and uh, we'll see you soon. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. If you'd like to hear more from Richard or learn from 11 property teams and property managers nationwide, sign up for a virtual live event on February 11th. You can find out more about that at realwealthshow.com. And if you haven't finalized your vision for 2023 or put your plans for the year on paper, consider joining Rich and me for our New Year Planning Retreat. We're doing a second one because the first one was so successful and so much fun. It will will be here in Malibu. You could find out more about that at kathyfedke.com. The date for that is March 3rd through the 5th. Again, details are at kathyfedke.com. Thanks for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show, and we'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.